Hello, I'm Mark Schildhaus, and because things on the internet seem to lose their date references pretty quick, today is Thursday, July 20th, 2023. On Sunday, June 4th, 2023, we visited the Northwest Train Museum in Snoqualmie, Washington, which is about 30 minutes due east of Everett, Washington. And it was a great train ride through some beautiful country. It was enjoyable. It was out of the way. The way the way their ticket works is you buy the ticket for the train and the secondary museum. And on the train ride, if you leave the terminal in the town of Snoqualmie, uh, you go one way, come back through, go back to the second museum site, have about half an hour at the second museum site, which is not quite enough, not for me, and then ride the train back to the original station, get off. Then you, your ticket allows you to come back to that second museum site if you want to spend more time there. Let's get on with the tour because the train ride is through a beautiful country. Well, I need to correct myself because I just looked at this locomotive and we're actually at the Northwest Railway Museum in Snoqualmie, Washington, which is, uh, I think I called it the Northwest Train Museum earlier. Uh, only because I asked, this is the Baldwin RS4 locomotive that is going to be pulling our train. And here are a couple of the car options we have once we boarded. We could have sat in uh, forward looking seats or whatever you want to call them, standard seats, or we could have sat in these wicker things. I'm not sure, quite honestly, don't remember what we sat in. For the next couple of minutes, I'm going to let you watch as we roll down the track and you can hear it and we're going to pass a log that I think they said was more than a hundred years old. It was hit by lightning. Uh, it was a tree that was up, hit by lightning. It was dead. They had to cut it down for its own safety. As you watch the videos roll, there is a lot of stuff and I'm going to use that as a neutral term uh, along the tracks. This rolling stock, uh, locomotives, cranes, track maintenance, stuff that was put along the track 50 years ago, I'm guessing, and then just abandoned, but through some beautiful country. Enjoy the ride. Yeah, 
This is in the town of Snoqualmie, Washington, and the area around the track in town was excellently maintained. This mask is clogged up. This is that secondary museum site where you'll see some other live rolling stock inside the barn. This is Snow Palmy. While we were touring the town, the train we rode on came back through the station, so I filmed it. And you'll notice that the conductor is now standing at the end of the train, the passenger end of the train, which is now the forward part of the train. And by railroad regulations, uh, he has to have a horn and a light on that end of the train. And he is responsible for blowing the horn with the appropriate signals that he's coming up on that crossing.
Some of the fun shots that we took as stills along the track. Here's the kayakers down in that river that I tried to get on the video. Here's that river, which absolutely beautiful. This tree caught me as interesting. It started growing out the side of the mountain and on, on a slope, and then it corrected itself as it went up. Snoqualmie Falls. This was a station that we were told is no longer in use. It's a storage facility, so we were told. One of the engines that was parked along that secondary museum site and some of the road maintenance gear that is parked out along that museum, secondary museum site too. Saw this door and just wondered if this door has anything to do with the movie Men in Black. Very colorful house. And this is the back of the train and as I was saying earlier when the trains quote-unquote in reverse where the engine is pushing the cars instead of pulling them there has to be a light a bell and a horn at the now front of the train and that has to be under direct control of someone such as the conductor trying to stay a little bit organized this is the Soqualmie depot, the Squamish station. There was a number of signages um, around the depot. It was a, a great place. That's where you bought your tickets. That's where we boarded the train. Then we went up to the river. Then we went back to the, through the depot again, back to that secondary museum site, then came back to the depot, and that's where we got off, and that was our, our train ride. I'm going to show you the depot stuff, and then we'll step over to that secondary site. A lot of information in here, and it was really enjoyable. And they talked about, and I'm not going to show it all to you, but uh, they talked about how the railroad came to Washington State and to Suquamish. It was pretty interesting, and they brought up the point, without money, nothing happens. The growth of the Snoqualmie area was based on a couple of different things and they are addressed in the depot and in the secondary museum site logging. This is one big log. Those guys are standing there with axes. I think they cut this thing down with a saw. I haven't seen a Coca-Cola case like this in a long time. Here is a switch control system for the guys who run the tracks and, and control the switches and you can read and the amperages the switch is drawing to make its electric switch so you don't have to go out there and run it. I did like the fact that there are a couple of toy trains sitting around the site. In the yard and area around the depot there are a number of things that are on display. Uh, a freight uh, car and this uh, mallet steam uh, number 11 from the U.S. Plywood Company, this 2662 compound mallet. Now, if you look at this thing, this is one big engine, and you could get up inside of it, and they had most of the stuff labeled, so if you weren't familiar with how a steam engine works, at least you could learn some stuff. There were a number of cars parked around the area, and most of them looked like it was, hey, let's just park it. Army Medical Service, the ambulance, kitchen car. You have to feed them. Kind of funny. I enjoyed it. When you're dealing in particular with wood burning locomotives, steam locomotives, you have the probability of hot embers coming out of the smokestack. What they did was they developed that Bell uh, Venturi concept smokestack to reduce that and um, the oil burners didn't need that. The coal burners didn't need that. Some of them got them. But th here's, here's how they, uh, at this railroad, how they fought the track fires. This is an ore or dirt transfer car. And I should have taken an angular oblique shot of it so you could see it. But you can get an idea. What you do is you lock the bed in in horizontal mode. You fill it up. You take it to where you want to dump it. Then you release one side or the other. And it dumps that way, the way you want it to go. You don't have to get another machine to unload it. I read things for what it's, what they say. So this is a Baxter company locomotive 6c the baxter was the company that bought it in the signage it says it was made by the george d whitcomb company in 1925 
for the W.A. Bechtel company, and I think Bechtel's still in business. Well, um, it's a cute little engine, and I read on the radiator that it's Ingersoll Rand. It may be that Ingersoll Rand radiator was added later. Don't know. A U.S. Army uh, GE 45-ton locomotive was on display, sitting there. I uh, wonder if it's running any period. And they talked about how they had to cut gorges, how they had to lay the track. And here's a picture of uh, railroad workers working on the track. That's a lot of dirt to move. Here is a picture of the logs that had to be cut down, the trees that had to be cut down through this dense forest uh, to make the railroad right away. Now going to shift over to that secondary museum site and there were a lot of items in that building. It was a great building. Uh, we had about 30 minutes to view it and I could have spent probably two hours in there. Reading the sign, the patent is for Heisler. They're referred to as Shays as far as I know. These are very peculiar or unique engines. They're designed to operate uh, very steep grades of the logging operation on the very tight curves of logging operation. And as you look at the locomotive, its, its belly is clear. Underneath it, its belly is clear. It's not uncommon to have gears underneath them and have track teeth in the middle of the track so these guys didn't slip going up a hill or or uh, sl slide going down the hill that they maintain traction the whole time. Their drive pistons are not uh, down by the front wheels pushing. Their drive pistons are on the side of the engines. Interesting design. Numerous pieces of rolling stock sitting around in the um, secondary museum site. Some of it very in very good condition. Some of it not so well. I'm going to let you just uh, slide through these and take what you can. Interesting bunk car. Uh, wish wish more of these were open so you could see inside. Some of them were. I'm not sure exactly what you call a person on a train taking care of you. Uh, you have, well, kind of know. Um, this one caught me by surprise. Thinking back to a Johnny Cash song, I don't think I would yell, hey, Porter, at her. And I, one of the things that would come up is the city of uh, New Orleans, um, sung by a number of people along the way. A railroad signaling lamps and such and here is a Sears catalog interesting prices there were a couple of model railroading displays inside the museum this one was pretty nice Lionel three track um, really nice this one here showed the logging operation stepped outside took a photo of these two engines in this car in the background is a repair barn a service barn that was associated with the secondary museum site but you weren't allowed to go in it our tour of the museum was pretty much complete we we're walking around the town there's a lot of signage around the town associated with the museum and it was really enjoyable really well done you had a really good idea of what was going on we went down to that massive log that was alongside you saw it on the train ride and it's the snow qual centennial log which implies to me 100 years and it was struck by lightning and you can see where it was damaged and they had to cut it down uh, for their own safety. Here's one of the few pictures of the area that I have of Snoqualmie and beautiful mountain in the background. Really nice town, the people were really friendly, uh, traffic was light, uh, streets were wide, really enjoyable view. Hope you enjoyed the trip. Thanks for watching.